In this video, let's talk on modulus or absolute value function. As we know, modulus means numerical value, that is, modulo 3 is equal to 3, modulo minus 4 is equal to 4. Now, this straight line you see here is what we represent as modulo so it's change negative number to plus so that means if i have modulo minus seven is also equals to modulo seven which is also seven so whether you have plus inside the modulo or minus your result is still plus so modulo minus 1.471 is also equals to 1.471 the minus we change to plus modulo minus 3.41 is also equals to 3.41 minus 5.61 is also equals to 5.61 modulo minus a is equals to modulo a is equals to a so modulo change negative to positive so whether the number inside is positive modulo 10 is still 10 and where or whether the number is negative modulo minus 10 is still 10 so that is one usage of um, modulus. Also, modulus is the distance defined with respect to origin. So let's see that one. So another definition is the distance defined with respect to origin. So let's say modulo x is equal to 1. Now this expression means the distance covered is one unit on the right hand side uh, or one unit on the left hand side that is that's the meaning of this it means distance covered is one unit on the right hand side and or one unit on the left hand side so now on number line you can understand this better so if i have this on number line if here is origin zero then here is one so here is minus one so now this representation here means modulo x is equals to one meaning the distance covered is one unit to the right that is plus also one unit to the left that is minus so this graph here simply means modulo x is equals to one or we can say s is equals to plus or minus one so learn how to use this so it's also distance to the right and distance to the left one unit according to this one so now what if it is less than or greater than so now let's say we have let's say we have modulo x is less than one now this means distance covered is less than one unit on right hand side or less than one unit on left hand side of origin now let's show this on number line remember when I use equal to, that is modulo s is equal to 1, it means distance covered is equal to 1 on the right hand side and is equal to 1 on the left hand side. But now that I'm using less than, it means distance covered is less than 1 unit on the right hand side and also less than 1 unit on the right, uh, on the left hand side. So now, if this place is zero the origin now if here is one yes minus one 
so since it slides down based on what we learn on inequalities it simply means i'll have something like this so like this so that is modulo s is less than one this is the illustration so that means s Uh, let's say greater than first now what if it is modulo x is greater than one so when this also as we say modulo x is equals to one means s is equals to plus or minus one definitely modulo x is less than one is now minus one is less than x and s is less than one that is the meaning in interval notation so this is this so that's what you see here on number line now how can we represent this minus one is less than x and s is less than one based on what we have done this is the same thing as s is a member of watch my video on interval notation so you will notice now that minus one is less than and this is open because it's less than so minus that will be minus one comma one then is also open yeah so that means another way of representing this this expression is the same so now let's say greater than you can watch my video again on interval notation so you will understand these parts so now let's say modulo s is greater than one so we are still learning how to use function so we are not really solving now just understand how to use function now let's say we have modulo x is greater than one now this one means the distance covered is more than one unit on right hand side or more than one unit on left hand side so we represent this on number line so we we'll have if here is zero here is one here is minus one so that means from here is greater than one unit to the right also is greater than one unit to the left so that's how we represent this so s is greater than a uh, modulo s is greater than one now let's say graphics a uh, graphical representation of modulus which represents two cases now if i have y let's say i have y equals to modulo x now this is equal to x that is s is greater than or equals to zero and this is minus x so x is less than zero now that means the definition of this modulo we can define it as so plus and minus so for when s is greater than zero and uh, or equals to zero or when s is less than zero so because we have plus here it will be greater than zero or equal to zero but if you have minus here it will be s is less than zero so that is the definition yeah so now this behavior is due to two straights uh, this behavior is due to two straight lines represented by modulus so if you plot this on graph you will see uh, let me try and sketch the graph for this for this definition so if we draw a graph for this you will see that let's say x 
let's say x and y so now let's say s will, uh, will be 0 1 2 3 0 let me remove that 0 1 2 minus 1 minus 2 now what do you think y will be so now if s is this or the plus definitely y now will be modular of x so that means when s is zero y is modular of zero y is zero when s is one y is modular of one one when s is two y is modular of two two when s is minus one y is modular of minus one which is one when s is minus two y is modular of minus two which is two so we've we'll talked about modular modular of any negative number we we'll change it towards positive so let's say this is the point so let's put this on graph now let's say i have this so if this is the origin zero one two yeah minus one minus one minus two now if we plot all these points so remember this is a y axis why this is x as is like that so we can label here also one two yeah no negative y but let me just put it here so now when s is zero y is zero so that will be the origin when s is zero y is zero now when s is one y is one so where is the points so when s is one y is one yeah so that means this point is one comma one again when s is two y is two so that will be this point when s is two y is 2 that means this place is 2 comma 2 also when s is minus 1 y is 1 so note those points yeah when s is minus 1 y is 1 so when s is minus 1 y is 1 yeah so this is minus 1 comma 1 now when s is minus 2 y is 2 yeah so this is minus 2 comma 2 now if we join this graph together so we'll get something like this from origin also like this so that means this place is um y is equals to x y this place is y is equals to minus x so this straight line here yeah, is y equals minus x and this straight line here yeah, is y equals to x so this is the graph of this modular so that is modular x we define it as s when s is greater than or equal zero and minus x when s is less than zero so that's it on graph so but when s is greater than or equals to zero so let's take it like case so case one now so let's consider when s is greater than or equal to zero so let's consider case one
when x is greater than or equal to zero so equation of the straight line yeah we change so we have equation of straight line we have two points so when x is greater than or equal zero then y minus y1 divided by x minus x1 is equals to y2 minus y1 divided by y2 minus divided by x2 minus s1 so now because the points if you look at the table so we have if the points pass through because if s is greater than or equal to zero so that will be the point will be zero comma zero and one comma one so let's say the point is passing through and uh, the straight line is passing through this point what will be the equation of the straight line as shown on the graph you can see from origin so we have something like this so this is origin when s is zero y is zero also when s is one y is one so for this straight line this is the one we want to consider so that is zero comma zero also one comma one so the one that gave us this straight line so you can check the graph again so let's find the equation of that straight line now put the points so that is yeah it means s1 y1 s2 y2 so if you substitute this will becomes y minus 0 divided by x minus 0 is equals to y2 that is 1 minus 0 over 1 minus 0 so this is y over x is equals to 1 over 1 so if you cross multiply that means y is equals to x so that was, this is how we got x yeah that is for that straight line so now for the case 2 when s is less than 0 so we will check the graph again so let me clear this if you check the graph again you see when s is less than zero so the points passing through let's choose let's choose um points minus one comma one on the graph and because when s is less than zero that is s is minus one when s is minus one on the graph y is one you can check also minus two when s is minus two y is two we don't want to choose zero because we don't have minus zero so when s is minus one y is one when s is minus two y is two because the second case is when s is less than zero so let me write the case two when s is less than zero so we choose the point minus one comma one and minus two comma two so when s is minus two y is two if you use the same equation of a straight line y minus y1 given two points s minus s1 is equals to y2 minus y1 divided by s2 minus x1 so this will become y minus y1 so remember this is s1 y1 and this is s2 y2 so that will be y minus 1 divided by x minus minus 1 is equals to because x is minus 1 equals to s2 that uh, y2 that is 2 minus y1 over 1 divided by s2 
minus 2 minus s1 that is minus 1 so we have y minus 1 divided by s plus 1 ah. is equals to 1 divided by minus 2 plus 1 because minus times minus is plus now y minus 1 divided by s plus 1 is equals to 1 over minus 1 now cross multiply if we cross multiply we have So cross multiply we have minus y minus 1 is equals to s plus 1 so this is minus y plus 1 is equals to s plus 1 then minus y is equals to s plus 1 minus 1 minus y is equals to x so y is equals to minus s so that means for s is less than 0, y is equals to minus x. So that's how we got the true definition for modulo x. So, similarly, if I now want to use the same techniques, modulo, that is, I can say y equals modulo x minus 1 so the definition for this so this will be x minus 1 that is for s is greater than or equals to 1 or minus x minus 1 for s is less than or equals to 1 so we can also show this based on how we show the first one now modulo x minus 1 means s minus 1 is the distance of s minus 1 is uh, 1 unit to the right and also minus 1 unit to the left so if i have modulo i mean if i represent this now as 1 unit to the right or 1 unit to the left that will be minus 1 is less than or equal to x minus 1 y x minus 1 is less than or equal to 1 so this is how we can represent this that is modulo s one unit to the right also one unit to the left so anytime you see modulo that's how you can change it to the interval notation now you should note generally you can jot points so note generally every modular function has a bit two values so based on what i've been explaining since we have seen that any modular function has a bit two values that is plus or minus for two values just like modular s is equal to one that is s is equal to plus or minus one modulo s is less than 1 it means minus 1 is less than s and s is less than 1 like that so that's why i'm generalizing it now every modular function has a bit two values which are represented by positive and negative but it only gives the positive outcome that is any modular you have even though it's negative it always give a positive outcome like this so we've explained that so students shouldn't confuse by positive or negative uh, negative sign as this sign are different interval but the outcome are positive meaning minus one is a different interval from plus one but the modulo we give us the same outcome modulo of minus one is one modulo of plus one is also one so another point you should notice that modulus function is never negative so modulo of x is always greater than or equal to zero for any real number so modulo of x is not less than zero modulo of x is always greater than zero 
meaning modulo of minus 10 is plus 10 so it's always greater than zero you can't have modulo of a number and still get negative less is wrong so modulo of a number is always greater than or equal to zero so now let's see some question to explain now if i ask you explain uh, let me put it as example explain explain the following explain the following number one let's say modulo s is equal to five i i modulo s is equal to minus five i i i modulo s is equal is less than modulo s is less than five iv modulo s is less than minus five v modulo s is greater than minus five vi modulo x is greater than five so explain this so now the first one so in short the first one modulo s is equal to five this simply means s is equal to plus or minus five so that's the explanation for this so that is s is plus 5 to the right and also plus 5 to the left so if you represent this on number line it means if i have this so if there is zero it means the s is five units to the right also five units to the left as in that's the meaning of modulus s is equal to five well, s is plus or minus 5. Now, if you plot this on graph as shown before, so if you assign values for 5, so you can easily show that in this case, the two cases are plus 5, minus 5. So now, the second one, modulo x is equal to minus 5. So it means it has no solution modulo s is equal to minus 5 now what do we say about modulo now i've told you that modulo of anything must be greater than or equal to zero now since this is negative then this cannot have a solution so because if we plot this in graph so this cannot have a solution let's say we have a graph so if here is y as is here is x this is origin now if you plot this y is equal to modulo x and y is equal to minus 5 so if you plot this two on graph that is y is modulo s and also y is minus 5 as, as we see it here so because this function is like y equals to this and y is this so if we plot these two function on graph y equals minus s and y equals uh, y equals modulo s and y equals minus 5 <coughs> let's say this is minus 5 you know this is negative side of y and this is negative side of x now if this point is minus 5 that means this place is representing y equals to minus 5. Now, you will see that this is origin and the up one is plus. This does not cut at any point. It cut at this point, meaning it does not have solution. So the two graphs this does not intersect. So this graph, let me show the second one for you to see. So the second one, y is modular x so down we pass 
if we assign number as we show in the first graph can what's the first graph as we show in first graph that I assign numbers for s that is 0 1 2 minus 2 like that so then if I plot this then one will go this way the other one will go this way that is here will be y equals x for this then here will be y equals minus s now if you compare this graph and this graph they don't have any intercepts so that means the question will not have any solution so that shows that the modulus cannot be negative number so the second one does not have a solution so to understand the first graph let me go back to the a so that you grab this one so if i have modulo x is equals to 5 if i plot this on graph so i'm plotting the graph of y equals modulo x and y equals modulo uh, equals to 5 so that means if I plot this on graph, here is y, here is x. So the graph that will pass this way, here will be y equals x. The other one, here will be y equals minus s. This will serve for y is modulo s. Now remember this is positive side of y. Let's say 5 is somewhere here. You will see that the graph cuts at this point also at this point so those two points it's got here will be minus five here will be five so that means modulo s is equal to plus five units to the right or minus five units to the left take notes so and the second one now no solution yeah no solution for the b now the number three Remember figure 3, excuse me, so now modulo S is less than 5, for modulo S is less than 5, so that means modulo S is less than 5, so this means minus S is less than X and s is less than 5 so we can also show that on uh, graph so roughly <coughs> the graph will be this way so when because we are plotting for when y uh, y is equals to modulo s and also when y is equals to 5 if we plot the two so you have this so that means minus 5 will be less than s and s will be less than 5 so you have to share this place so to be like number line well we are just trying to understand the usage of um, modular so for the a parts now that is the roman figure one so if i have i modular x is equal to 5 means s is equal to plus or minus 5 i i if i have modulo s is equal to minus 5 it means this does not have solution because a modulus of number cannot give negative result now the third one modulo s is less than 5 this means s this means minus 5 is less than s and s is less than 5 so that's the meaning of this in interval notation if you want to represent this it means s is a member of minus 5 so like this so if you represent this as our interval notation now the next one number 4 what can you say on number 4 that is roman figure 4 this one so that is iv modulo s is less than minus 5 now because this is minus 5 it will not have solution so i've told you that a modulo can only be greater than or equal to zero it cannot be less than zero so that means that we have no solution 
so now if we talk about the next one so that means if you have s is less than minus five so to have no solution so if we show that on graph you know you are plotting for y is equals to modulo s and also y is equals to minus five those are the two graphs you have and y is less than minus five that means it will be towards downward yeah so the other two y is s and y is minus s is s so it will not have solution but if we consider the next one s is greater than minus five so five modulo x is greater than minus five so if you look at this one so far s is greater than minus five so it should be up yeah i'll still do for y is equals to modulo x so where here will be y is s here will be y equals to minus x now if i plot y equals minus five yeah but y is greater than say we look at it to, to be greater than minus five so that means it should be yeah all this will be greater than minus five so this will not be zero so that means for s will be for all real numbers so any number that are real number will satisfy the equation yeah so that means in this case so We can say that modulo s is greater than minus 5 for all x is a member of real number. So, or if I represent this in symbol, this is a symbol for, for all x is a member of real number this is how i can represent it again so this is for all x is a member of real number so you will learn how to use all these symbols like that so now let's see the next one the next one is um modulo x is greater than five so if modulo x is greater than five so if you plot that modulo x is greater than 5. So if you plot this on your graph, then this will be like, so y is equals to modulo x then this graph will represent y equals x this one will represent y equals minus x so we are plotting for y equals modulo s and also y equals 5 so now y equals 5 let's say it's somewhere here let's say 5 is somewhere here so if we trace their intersection to the point of intersection here will be 5 here will be plus 5 but you know x is greater than 5 so that means and also yeah so s is greater than minus five so this one should go in so uh, yeah s is less than minus five s is greater than minus five so because modulo s is greater than five should be so to now be s is less than minus five or s is greater than 5 as seen on this graph so this side s will be greater than 5 this side s will be less than minus 5 s will be less than 5 so that means modulo x is greater than 5 is the same thing as s is less than minus 5 or s is greater than 5 so you need to study all this representation 
So if we say it in question, we can know what to do. So now let's say a generalized result. Let's say a generalized result here. Yeah. Generalize results. So for any real number, for any real number x, we have that s square is equal to modulo s square. Again, for any real number x, two. So square root of s square is equal to modulo x take note so that is a generalized formula so now if we are now using uh, more intervals so if s so that means let me say number three uh, my figure three so notes for any number Real number x, x square is modulo x square, or root x square is modulo s. So three. Let's say if a is greater than zero. If a is greater than zero, then x square is less than or equal to a square. So if a is greater than zero, a square is less than or equals to a square. If and only if this symbol means if and only if a if and only if modulo s is less than or equal to a or minus a is less than or equals to x and s is less than or equals to a you know that is the meaning of this one so if and only if we have this then this will hold x square will be less than or equal to a square so provided that modulo x is less than or equal to a then the r square will hold so that is three then let's say four let me say if a is greater than zero so under this one i can say a square is less than or equals to a square if and only if modulo s is less than or equals to a or if and only if minus a is less than or equals to s and s is less than or equals to a so now, a square is less than a square if and only if modulo x is less than a or minus a is less than s and s is less than a. C a s square is greater than or equals to a square. Now, if and only if this will hold, if and only if modulo x is greater than or equal to a. So, if modulo x is greater than or equal to a, then it's also the same as s is less than or equal to minus a, or s is greater than or equal to a. So, take note. So you should know the two now. If modulo s is less than a, this is the outcome. If it is greater than or equals to a, see the outcome. So that is s will be less than or equals to minus a. We have shown this on graph. So now d. S square is greater than a square. If and only if modulo s is greater than a or minus or s 
is less than minus a or s is greater than a so d d if a square is less than or equal to a square and less than or equal to b square this will hold if and only if a is less than or equal to modulo x and uh, modulo s is less than or equal to b so that is when this can hold also this is also s is a member of so minus b minus a in a closing tower then union a b because it is a close interval and you should note this is modular so that is negative uh, one unit to the left and one unit to the right so that's why to be minus b s is a member of minus b minus a union plus a plus b so another one e then if a square is less than a square and is less than b square so it can only hold if a is less than modulo s and is also less than modulo b so this is the same thing as s is a member of minus b minus a so it's open so we we'll use that bracket so union a comma b so then number four iv now if a is less than zero then modulo x is less than or equal to a we have no solution Now I've explained that because we said no modulus should be less than zero. It can be greater than or equal to zero. So that means if modulus x is if a is less than zero, all those ones I did before is if a is greater than zero. And you will notice that in the parts when we uh, when I use s modulus s is greater than a, then it can be s is less than minus a or s is greater than a but in this case when modulo s is less than zero then it cannot have solution meaning if modulo s is equal to minus anything then it cannot have solution so that means if a is less than zero then if we have modulo s s is less than or equals to a it will not have solution now still under this one modulo s is greater than or equal to a so if a is less than zero and modulo s uh, a is greater than modulo s is greater than or equals to a so this means all real number will be solution all real number solution so in this case all real number will be solution so many of you see any question like maybe this then all real number will be a solution but if it is less than or equal to a negative then it will not have solution take notes so let's say another one so let's say i have modular s plus y is equals to modular x plus modular y so remember we are saying if a is less than zero 
So modular S plus Y is the same thing as modular S plus modular Y. If and only if S is greater than or equals zero and Y is greater than or equals zero or S is less than or equals zero and Y is less than or equals zero. So and also if s y is equal to zero so if you multiply it together that is when this can hold you should take note so now i can also have modulo x minus y will give me modulo x minus modulo y so this can also hold if s is greater than or equal zero and y is greater than or equals zero and also modulo x is greater than or equal to modulo y so that is when this can hold also it can also hold if s is less than or equals zero y is less than or equals zero or modulo s is greater than or equals to modulo y so it can also hold so take note now that modulo x plus or minus y is equals to modulo x minus modulo y so uh, like this and sorry modulo x plus or minus y is equals to modulo x plus modulo y so there's a representation so modulo x plus or minus y is less than or equal to modulo x plus modulo y take notes so also modulo x plus or minus y is greater than or equal to modulo of modulo s minus modulo y modulus so like that so now we are going to solve question in another video so based on inequality so i will now start inequality in another video so now you have understand or familiarize yourself with the function modulus function so Thank you.